What's up? It's Reincarnate. It's Friday night. We are live at the castle yet again. I am sitting here with BT. What's up, you guys? How's it going? Oh, I'm awesome, man. I like yourself. Cool. Really good, man. Wow. Nice to meet you. So I saw in an interview that you like sharks. That like if you were not, you know, doing as much music, you'd like to devote some more time to shark conservation. Absolutely. I, you know, sharks are, and this is we're gonna get really serious really quick. Yeah, I can sure. see sharks are are one of my favorite creatures on the entire planet, and so I'm. Uh, an, Sort of avid scuba diver. I've been scuba diving for years and years now. Hours, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I have over 3,000 hours underwater. I'm a DMT, and so I'm one certification away from being a dive master. And I've probably spent as much time with sharks as I have with people, okay. literally. And you know, the first time ever that I was with yeah. sharks was way, way out in French Polynesia. I was terrified, you know, and I had all these preconceived notions of, I watched Jaws as a kid, yeah. and you know, I thought, you know, sharks are these these frightening creatures, and I was so scared, there's actually this really funny video of me, this is years and years ago, and I'm sitting on the edge of the boat, and they said, okay, uh, on the count of three, you know, put your mask on, and do barrel roll in, and, and so they could, my dive master said, you know, one, to, and I take my mask off. I'm like, I can't do it. There's like fins behind me and stuff. And we did it like three times. And finally, he goes, Okay, on the count of three, one, boom. And he pushed me in. And um, the experience from when I touched the water and throughout that dive, it literally completely changed how I perceived those creatures. Um, they're just some of the most extraordinarily misunderstood animals, I think. You know, living things on on Earth, and uh, and they are these incredible predators. You know, like it's like seeing a lion in the wild, but um, they're such an important part of the ecosystem and of the food chain. And without them, absolutely everything is off, out of balance yeah. and off kilter. And our shark our shark population globally is off by in the lower 90th percentile. And you know, sharks are are captured, these beautiful, majestic creatures, and they're captured and they cut their fin off their body and they throw them back in the water to die. They're not even used, they don't even use the whole right. shark for food, you know? And I just, after spending so much time with them and seeing, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of creatures on Earth you can look at and you don't get the sense that they're kind of that there's any kind of real sort of tangible connection between you and that creature you know um, and and then there's other creatures certain kinds of dogs for example even with cats I've felt that sometimes um, uh, where you look at the animal and there's this sense of consciousness that, that not to sound hippie-ish that just actually radiates from this creature where it you have a sense of it has an understanding of what it is and that you're different from it and I've never felt anything more profound than the, than the first time I ever spent time with sharks. And um, I felt incredibly, uh, just not even reverent is the right word, just uh, sort of drawn to them, sense them. And, and whenever I go, I, I actually, this is a true story, I will actually accept gigs in places because I know that there's great shark diving That's near awesome. that. And so, you know, I've, I've dove all over the world now, and they're just my favorite things to see. They're just so powerful and and intelligent, and they're just incredible. And you sense this sort of wisdom in their eyes that you really, I can't tell you sitting here right. talking with you. You have to experience that. So they are something that I feel you know, really warrant protection. Uh, I saw that in the video, and so I did, and I knew that you you really enjoyed them, so I wanted to give you that's give you this. awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this is very cool. I will wear this later because it's effing cold here. here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> cool, man. Thank you, you very you much. A, you're welcome. You have a, a record in the Guinness Book. Is it a stutter effect? Is that is what it's yeah, for? It's for the, for the most edits ever okay. in a recorded piece of music. That's so the simply being loved. That's, that's right. It's for simply being loved, and it's six thousand one hundred seventy-eight edits in the song. So what software lot. did you use? It's by hand. I did it by hand. Yeah, and it's crazy too that the sort of proofing process for the Guinness Book of World Records uh -huh. is way more detailed than you may imagine. You know, they, you can't, they, I mean, they approached us, but you can't, 
say, hey, I jumped more times on my right foot than anyone ever has. Like, they require so much empirical data to support whatever it is you think. And so there's like this thesis like about like that big of, and I had to show every single edit that I did in my DAW and it was an intense process. I was like, hey, weeks and weeks. I was like, you guys came to me about this. Like, are you serious? So it was a lot of work, but it's really cool. I mean, it's something I'm really proud of, you know, to, to have done that and, and not doing it to do it. It's like that, that the piece of music required it of me and so you know I hope that people people coming up see things like that you know and say wow you know hard work pays off because it does you know there's not there, there's a, a shortcut to being mediocre and that's mm -hmm. kind of about it you know you said that what made you want to make this last album is that you were excited about EDM this weekend yeah absolutely it's true it's you know it's funny because for someone that's so sort of aligned with electronic dance music mm -hmm. culture, I've always felt on the per periphery of it my whole career, you know, and so, um, and there have been moments where something has really excited me, the early, I guess people call it liquid drum and bass now, some of that music like really excited me, some of the early breakbeat stuff, I mean really, really early breakbeat stuff like Africa Bambada and Man mm -hmm. Parish and stuff, that really excited me. There have been moments, Trent Amalo really excited oh, yeah. me, you know, but um, for the most part, Electronic dance music hasn't held the luster and appeal to me that I think you know people feel about what is you know, our culture, and so it really has been over the last couple of years that, that I've heard things that I felt were really, really inspired, like actually inspired. You know, where it's not somebody, and there's you know with anything and with any kind of music, with anything in the arts, there's things where there are people copying things, right. you know, and people say that's a sincere form of flower. I don't believe that. I think it's just kind of regurgitation. It's not, I don't think that, I really don't. It's like that kind of trying to keep up with the Jones thing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But for every 10 things like that, and it's a pretty high ratio if you think about it, I, I, I think that right now there's 10% that is really authentic and new and interesting and um, I, I've just been very inspired by it, you know, for the last couple of years. So, of all different types, too. You know, um, there's some amazing trance being made, there's some amazing, uh, some of the deep house being made right now is freaking insane. Like, I can't even take it. Like, that, the Dusky record, do you guys know the, the new Dusky record? Do you know this band, Dusky? No, I'm sorry. You should know this band, they're incredible. But, you know, and people have made such a big deal out of disclosure, they're awesome. But that sounding kind of stuff, like the Anjuna Deep sort of stuff, and then, and then some of the IDM stuff that's being made right now is amazing, and some of the bass music stuff. It's just amazing music happening right now. What I like so. is that they're all encompassing, too. Like, you've got all these different genres of music coming together, too. Like, EDM is like everything. You've got rap, you've got hip hop. You know, they're all like, hey, this is really successful. We need to do this because otherwise we're not going to be relevant I know it's, so it's like everyone it's crazy you know a lot of the guys a lot of hip-hop producers now uh, and I know a lot of people I mean I know a lot of producers just in general mm -hmm. you know but I have a lot of friends that make hip-hop records you know produce hip-hop and um, a lot of the guys in that world are now like they want to be a part of the EDM thing yeah. and so they're saying wait what's this for on the floor so I have friends you know guys I've known for years it never cared about like, yo, dude, what's that compressor you used on this track? And what's this thing from that track? And like, wow, you guys care about this now? It feels great, honestly, because for years and years, I mean, literally, for the last, I don't even know, I, you know, 15 years, I felt like this is never going to happen here. You know, standing on stage in Brazil or in Hong Kong, and there's 20,000 people. And I think, I'm never gonna get to do this and show my mom this, for example, in my own country. And then, now we have ADC and Ultra, and these incredible events happening in, in our country. It's just all over in. It's like unbelievable in this very short period of time. So, you know, I hear people saying things like, oh yeah, and the bubble and all this kind of stuff. And I just think, what? people aren't really looking at is it's just the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. you know we've built such a sustainable and rich culture 
over a period of 20 years. And it's proven to work in certain ways. People know how to move their bodies to it. They know how to be responsible and take care of one another in this almost kind of like, you know, ancestral, like a, you know, ancient kind of mm -hmm. um, tribal. Uh, ritual, tri yeah, like tribal sort of environment. It's, it's a thing that you're just seeing the, the tip of it crest into the, the mainstream and, you know, backlash about that kind of thing. But um, I think it's I think it's awesome and going to continue to grow, so it's an exciting time for music. Do, you, do people submit music to you? If somebody wanted to submit something to you, how would they do oh, that? Yeah, all the time. I, I get it a bunch of different ways. You okay. know, people send me messages on Twitter and say, oh, you know, please, please check this out and leave me Facebook messages. Um, I get, and more, you know, the way that I actually, I'd say nine times out of 10, listen to something is when somebody comes up to me and they hand it to me in person okay. and they say something and it's thoughtful and you know that, you know, it's just not some BS thing where they're just trying to blow up their SoundCloud, like they're actually yeah. doing something they care about. You just sense it. And so, I mean, I found some amazing music that way. Amazing, amazing music that way. You heard it first, send it to him. Yes, <laughs> yeah, if you see me, hand me something, so. <laughs> I'd like to thank you so much for your oh, time. Oh, it's my pleasure, absolutely. Thank for you. For Dave America TV, I'm Reincarnate, this is BT.